for sitting down with us. First off, what made you want to bring Mr. Peabody and Sherman to the big screen? Um, you know, when I was a kid, I remember watching Mr. Peabody and Sherman on Rockin' Bullwinkle, and I loved them as a kid. And I was very excited when I got the opportunity to direct a film of them. Right. And there was nothing really driving you <laughs> to say, I want to demand to make it? It was just, oh, well, the came up. Um, you know, it, it was really, it wasn't really the opportunity. It was just someone suggested it. Oh. Someone asked me the question simply, do, do you want to direct a movie with Mr. Peabody and Sherman? And my answer was yes. Uh, and so then we began a very long process of bringing it uh, to, to the screen. They asked you like that, like they were actors. Do you want to make a direct a movie It was a little bit them? like that. It was actually my producing partner named Jason Clark, right. who at the time was, uh, we were just doing uh, Stuart Little. Okay. And uh, he said, because he'd had a conversation actually with the people at Classic Media, which is where you know, they had the property, and right. I guess someone suggested somebody. I didn't even know uh, the rights would be available. Right. And, the, you know, you've had the Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle coming out at that point, right? Um, I, you know what? It, it was, I don't remember what year that was out, but it was... Yeah, 2001? Been, no, this, this happened, I think, later. So oh, okay. So it may have been 2003. <laughs> so the dust had settled from that. The, yes. And, I, and you know, I, I, it was going to be, qu you know, quite a different sort of thing. Right. And, and particularly when we decided that we wanted it to be 100% uh, animation, mm. I think that, that was a big turning point. Uh, the characters, I, I expect they're quite well known in America. I've seen them pop up in pop culture references on things like Family Guy and The Simpsons, but certainly in the UK, I hadn't heard of these particular characters until the film was starting really working, like last year. Right. So, Well, I think you'd find even in America that the characters are very well known among a certain group of people, hmm. uh, but aren't particularly well known among children. Hmm. Uh, and so this was really something from my childhood. And, and how have you dealt with trying to include everybody as well as making sure it's good for diehard fans as well? Making sure you've got people running around, <laughs> breathing down your neck, making sure it's perfect <laughs> to the original cartoons. Right. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, because our intentions were to sort of do justice to the original, hmm. uh, to be true to the spirit of them, certainly, uh, and try to capture it, but to go beyond it, uh, that was sort of, you know, what we've been trying to focus on doing, I think. Um, the character of Mr. Peabody in the cartoons has got a very dry wit, and that works when you're working with five minutes, but when you've got a, what, a 90, 95 minute frantic action adventure, which goes really fast, I expect, and you kind of need to have something to keep it momentum going. How was it working with a character who is very delicate and deliberate in what he says? Well, you know, I think we saw that as, a, as an opportunity. It wasn't mm -hmm. something that, you know, we thought was necessarily working against the, the storytelling. It was really the essence of Mr. Peabody as a character, and I think we, we really wanted to, to be true to who that was. Um, and so, you know, it was really just a matter of trying to tell the story honestly about mm -hmm. these particular characters and put them into situations that would bring bring out the most of their character. And with Ty Burrell as the lead, he's not well known in per se as a massive lead actor. How do you go about saying, this is the guy who's going to be leading our big new animation film? Well, you know, I think the, the great thing is that when we started on the film, uh, we decided that we would really go for the best actor for it, not necessarily the, you know, necessarily the most famous, although right. Ty is quite famous for a modern family. Yeah. Uh, and, and I have to say that working with Ty has just been a pleasure. He's such a warm and wonderful person and brings all of that to his performance. And working with 3D, this is your first time in 3D, I believe? Well, we did a conversion of Lion King to 3D, but, but that was but, really a post-conversion. Yeah. This yeah, is the yeah. first time I've done a film that was, uh, you know, meant to be 3D from the very beginning. And was, I, I, I'm looking at the footage, is Mr. Peabody's nose more exaggerated? Is there a lot of things that are pointing out in that direction? <clears throat> well, you know, 3D is a tricky thing. You know, you want to make sure to, to do it in the right measure. You don't want everything necessarily popping off the screen just, mm. just to, to do that. And, and the world, the environments, you know, did you look into, with Egypt, things that are pointing out, especially with spears and with the Trojans, there's a lot of swords. Did you look into that direction as well and making it more depth? Well, you do. I think that, you know, you want to have sort of 3D uh, uh, events in the film um, sort of throughout, you know, so, so certainly those kinds of more, you know, um, gag opportunities that sort of present themselves and you definitely want that. But you really want 3D to work as a, as a kind of companion to the storytelling. Mm. And so we actually work quite hard throughout the whole process to make sure that the scenes are, are, are using 3D in the best way possible. And with the two characters, it's quite an interesting dynamic. You've got the father and the son, but the son's kind of silly, the father's very smart, the father's a dog. Right. How are you dealing with that and making sure it works for audiences and not just as a crazy cartoon? Well, 
you know, again, uh, it's sort of built upon the classic dog-boy relationship. And, and the fact that, you know, the dog happens to be his father is sort of a great twist. And I think, uh, interestingly, whenever I pitch this to kids particularly, they immediately grasp onto that idea. If they've never heard of it before, they don't know Mr. Peabody and Sherman, the minute they understand that the dog adopts the boy, it just seems like something worth knowing about. <laughs> uh, lastly, what do you hope audiences are taking away from this film? Well, you know, I hope that they'll either be reintroduced to these characters or, or meet them for the very first time and that somehow the characters uh, become indelible for them as, as much as they were for me when I was a kid. Thank you very much for your time.